many people in America are familiar with hackers in terms of what they are because they occasionally hear about cybercrime and identity theft issues of major corporations on the news. They also know people usually in their friends and social and business networks, especially if there's someone trying to become something in the world or do something for their life in terms of earnings, who have been victims of cybercrime and identity theft. Just about every human being in America has heard the commercials for those companies that are supposed to be protecting our wealth in terms of what they do to protect our assets. My father's program that he purchased, which I think was Lifeline, uh, did a good job in protecting him several times while he was alive. So I know that they have a worth. The problem we also have in America is that people who are not American and are foreign entities are taking our private records and putting them online. We also have a problem across America with the health networks now becoming more technologically driven and that they can take that information from one hospital and one clinic to the next with ease, but it's not always done with our permission. And that takes away our right to the second and third opinion about our illness, our disease, or our momentary crisis of health. The problem in America is now an abused life. Many, many people's lives are abused by total strangers today. We have a major problem with abusing people in America. I see abuse of children all the time when I'm sitting outside the stores where people who are impoverished, people who are on budgets, live. In other words, where they go to shop. Because the parents have not bothered and are too lazy to pick up a book on parenting. How do you handle a wayward child but you created that wayward child by not being willing to pick up a book and you've entitled them to do things and then you're upset about them doing things out in public that you entitle them to do. It's crazy what you think of you. But what I can talk about, not in terms of parenting, as I know there's plenty of books out there by Dobson and others and Bradshaw to help you with your parenting of your multiple children, but everybody in America loves to have sex, but that's not the point. In a time of COVID, people are still having intimate relations, I would presume, in their families. And there's still a risk of those people being infi infidelous and having sex outside the marriage and bringing home COVID and other diseases like AIDS and other things that are less popular to talk about today because they've been mainly managed by healthcare. Now, when I'm talking about these things, I'm not talking about anything new and exciting, for perhaps, but we're in a political marketplace. And the political marketplace is, who are you? And American citizens have to be able to prove who they are today. But let's be really clear about the law. The law says that the individual citizen has rights to themselves and you as a stranger to them have no right to them. So when you see someone in struggle, you have no right to them from the get-go. So the fact that you're walking up to them and saying, I'm in power over you, here's a bag that I purchased for you, slave, is immoral and offensive to someone with a brain of intelligence. But if you walk up to that person in care and kindness and say, it looks like you might be in a time of struggle. I don't know all the details of what's going on for you, but I'm wondering if there's something you're trying to obtain today or a goal you have today while it's marvelously raining that I might be able to help you with. Are you needing food? Are you needing a blanket? Are you needing new clothing? Are you needing new shoes? Is there something like that that you're needing? Now, clearly, if you say that to the wrong person, they'll try and take advantage. But you could also say, is there one item out of this list that I might possibly be able to help me with? And the value of that is you're giving that person a spectrum of the value of the cash access or resource access or talented team access that you might have access to that you've already thought about. But I usually tell people in saying, why don't you say in terms of your resources or your social networks? Because presumably the person should be probably looking for a job as I am. And someplace across your professional networks of LinkedIn or Facebook, you might have somebody in your community who knows how to give somebody a job and employ them. And then they've got money coming in. But openly, nobody needs your help going to a medical doctor. Nobody needs your help going to a shelter that don't exist for men. And nobody needs your fucking help playing around in their health care. But if you're trying to help someone with their health care, then they need food. So your best, simplest answer is, is there some food you need today that I could buy for you in any way? But what I find fascinating is the people that you choose to help are the people that have had no intention of getting off the block. 